Hi everyone, it's Franny from Heidi and Franny's Garage and today we've got issues with the top on the 993. So this is our problem. The top is completely up, car is running, but I've still got that indicator telling me that the top isn't down all the way. So that's because of one of the latch motors. So let's figure out what's going on and get that fixed. So with that light on on the dash, it means that probably means that one of these two latch motors isn't working properly. So the first thing you want to do is determine which one of them. You can kind of grab hold of these things. Look at the top up just a little way. You can grab hold of these things and pull a little bit and see if they're good and tight. They both feel fine. So our next step in determining which one is which is there's these little switches here on both sides, here and here. And what we're going to do is put a little bit of electrical tape over them. The electrical tape will hold long enough to keep the switches down. That'll trick the mechanism into thinking that the top is already down and it will engage these little guys. So we want to see them in action. With the tape on these switches, we can go ahead and test these two latches and see what they do. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn the, the ignition on. We don't have to start the car. But then we're going to try to close the top. I'm going to hit the button on the center console and try to close the top and see which one of these goes a little nuts. All right, here we go. Closing the top. There they go. Okay, great. Now we're going to open the top. Ah, there we go. The one on the left is working fine. All right. So that's our issue. It's definitely this one. Oh, and now in the lock position, it's loose. And this one isn't. It's nice and solid. So our problem is definitely the passenger side latch here. What we're going to do is go ahead and take this piece off and pull this guy out. And we're going to put it on the bench and take it apart. To get this top piece off, we've got two Phillips screws here and here and then we've got a bunch of snap clips all around so I'm going to take these two screws off and then I'm going to work these clips off very carefully. The clips for this thing are right in the top here so along this top ridge here so we just got to very carefully work them out. There's our first one. There we go. Great, and one more. There we go. With that piece out of the way, we can see our latch motors on both sides here. There's an electrical connection um, here for it that we'll have to disconnect. There we go. Now we've got four uh, five millimeter hex bolts here that are holding this latch motor on. So we're going to go ahead and take those off. And the last one down here in the corner. With those four bolts out, all we have to do is just work the latch motor out. It's a little weird and you may have to sort of move it around a little bit, but it will come out. Here it goes. Okay. With our latch motor removed, we're going to go ahead and move on to the workbench and we'll take it apart and see what we can do to replace this gear. To take our latch motor apart, there are four Phillips screws that we're going to have to take out. Oh, 
All right, with the screws out, we can get the top off. It could be a little bit difficult. You might have to use a screwdriver to pry it up. Just make sure you don't stick a screwdriver in the actual mating surface. So just work the screwdriver around the edge and try to pop it off. Just work it a bit from both sides here. There's a there's a bit of a slot here, right here on this edge here. So uh, you can get a screwdriver in there and sort of wedge that apart. And just keep working both sides until you can get it up. There are steel index pins and that's what makes this thing a little bit difficult to get out. Here we go and off the last pin. You want to be careful when you peel it back. There's a couple of wires down here that go to the micro switch. So you want to be careful of those. So the gears we're replacing are going to be this one here, which will just pull pretty much straight out. That's all there is to it. And this one. Now, this gear is hooked to the arm, as you can see. And our broken tooth is right here, right there. Now I've already had this apart and when I took it apart I did find the broken tooth. So you want to go searching for that broken tooth. Last thing you want is that thing floating around inside here. You'll go ahead and snap another tooth off if that gets caught in the gears. So make sure you find your broken tooth and get it out of this, out of this unit. Now there's a little ring clip here right here there's a ring clip right here okay we have our little ring off looks like there's a set screw right here let's clean this out a bit all right there we go so loosen the set screw up now it looks like the cam is moving here so the placement of this cam is going to determine where it stops on its rotation so I am going to take a few pictures here to help me index this when I get it all back together. Looks like that. All right. All right, let's see if we can get the cam off of this thing now. There it goes, just work it back and forth. Set our cam aside. And now we have this gear to get off and it looks like it might be a press fit. Now is a good time to open up our bag of parts and see what this gear actually looks like so we can get some idea how to get it on and off. All right, well the inside of the gear is smooth, so that doesn't really give us much. Let's see, maybe the instructions will tell us something, huh? There's a full set of instructions here. All right, carefully pry off the upper cover. Next, we're going to remove the micro switch and it's a T9 Torx bit to take those guys off. Now there's a bunch of crud in the, in the caps of these screws, so you'll probably have to dig it out with like an X-Acto knife or something, but um, once you get it out, you should be able to loosen these guys up. There we go. We're gonna need this switch out of the way in order to get this gear out. There we go. Okay, it allows us to set the motor aside as well. Now, our next step is going to be to get this gear off. So we're gonna to have to push the shaft through. So I think I'm gonna use a puller, a pusher, puller, pusher thingy, to go ahead and push this shaft through. And I'm checking the end play on it. There's a little bit of end play. You can kind of hear it. So when we put the new gear back on, we're gonna to wanna to do the same sort of thing. Yeah, pushing it through, we can see 
and our pusher is actually pushing it out a little bit so there we go okay so there it is it's it's splined on the gear so we can take our gear off there was a washer actually two washers behind it so we'll want to make sure we put those back in well, I did splay the edge of this just a little bit, my pusher did. I think that goes into the other half. Yeah, it does. So it's going to go into here. So we're going to have to clean that up before we put this back together. So there's our two washers and our gear with the broken tooth on it. So it went like this. So our new one is going to have to go on like this as well. So there's no top or bottom to it. Let's dress this bit here at the top. I'm going to hit that with a Dremel, I think. All right, so we've taken the little bit down on this because of that, that puller push kind of splayed it out a little bit. It fits well into our bearing now and feels fine. There's very little movement on it. I think it's going to be fine. I don't think this was ever intended. This is awfully soft and I don't think it was ever intended to really put so much force on it. Okay, so now we have to reassemble this and put our gear back on. All right, we've put our shaft in. There were two washers here. I'm going to put our two washers back on, these distance washers here. Now the trick is going to be, and it's going to be super fun. Okay, we've got to fit this back on and press it on. Now since the cam fits over the top of this thing, and it can move because of this set screw here, I don't have to worry too much about exactly where this gear is on the shaft, which is great. So this is my rig to press this on. I'm going to actually use a large vise. And this piece is nice and loose. It spins easily. And it's all lined up, ready to go. So let's see how this goes. All right, it's getting on there. Boy, it's just, it's a, it's a thing to get that gear on. Woo! That was a bit of a bear getting that thing back on. So I went downstairs and I used the vise on it and I used a socket and clamped it in the vise and between myself and Heidi working on it a bit, we got it back in. I like the end play on it. There's just a little bit of end play. You should expect that. So that's good. Now all we have to do is just go ahead and reassemble all of it. It's a, uh, it's a little bit of a thing to get it back together, but we'll, and then we're going to have to kind of adjust that cam and make sure that the thing goes clicky clicky on each side. It'll be a thing. Next is our cam. That's kind of nice that this has a set screw in it here. That'll make life a lot easier. Now I think what we're going to do is reinstall the micro switch here so we can get some idea of how this thing's actually go working, going to go. Seems like it's always a bit of brain surgery with these things. Okay, that feels like it's seated. Let's take a look at our photos really quick like a bunny and get a general idea of where that cam should be. My guess is that what happened here was that the, the arm on the micro switch got just ever so slightly bent just from years of use, I guess. And it just wasn't quite shutting the motor off in time. So the latch, the latch would rotate around, it would hit its end stop, and the micro switch should have turned it off at that point, or just actually just a tad before that, and it didn't. And so it continued to drive and it got to the end and there's so much force in this thing. There's an enormous amount of mechanical advantage. And it just went punk and just popped one of the teeth off. So we can go ahead and adjust this so that that doesn't happen. Well, now that's interesting. So I think I have it off 180 degrees. This is why you take these pictures. It's super important. And double, triple, quadruple, check your work, of course. I'll listen this guy up. And it looks like with the arm all the way up and vertical, this thing was just over here-ish. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. 
So there we go, right at the end, we can hear it click. All right, and then all this way, and there's the click on the other side as it comes up on the cam. All right, I think I want that to be a little, a little further down. I think it's just a little too close. It just seems to activate the switch just a, like just in the nick of time, and that just seems scary to me. There, we can hear the click. The other, the final click is me hitting the, the stop. It's fine this way. Now I suppose if you've got it too far, if it's, if it's contacting the switch too early, then it's possible I suppose that the latch isn't going to seat completely, but I think there's a decent amount of slop in it. It doesn't have to be right at the very last millimeter. I think that looks pretty good. All right, let's check out our new gear as well and make sure that it sits in there and does its thing. One thing you want to make sure you do, of course, is, is re-grease everything. So I've got some high temperature, just wheel bearing grease. I think will be fine for it. It's designed for wheel bearings. It should be great. You can see kind of the action here as it spins around and it gets to the end. There's the little click. All right, and then all the way at the other end. You can hear the switch click. That should turn it off before it gets all the way to the end. So this is it here. We can hear the click. I'm going to err on the side of caution here. I'm, I'm just worried that I'm going to overdrive this and snap this gear again. It was so much fun to pull this gear off the first time. I don't want to do it ever again. So I can always readjust this very easily. So I think I'm going to err on the side of caution and see how it operates. And if it's fine, I'll just leave it. All right, I'm going to tighten this up a little bit. There we go. Now, funny, they still have this lock ring here, which really pretty much does nothing, but I'll go ahead and put it back on. So we have our little ring clip back on. We're going to lube up our gear a little more. Make sure everything spins well. Okay, at this point, I think we're set. We can go ahead and put this back together. Now, one of the cool things about this motor is that it has a little wheel on the back of it that you can turn back and forth. So we're going to use that to just sort of manually rotate this thing back and forth. It has a screw slot in the end. And the whole reason is there's a hole on each side of that black, big black trim piece that goes across the uh, top of the that front part of the top. And you can stick a screwdriver in there and spin it if your latch motor fails on you just to get the tops up or down or probably to get them latched would be what you'd use it for. So let's carefully put this back together. There's alignment pins here and we're just going to work it back together. And just make sure it's happy. Just carefully clamp it back together. Great, okay. All right, so now what we're going to do is just, just run this back and forth a little bit using, our, uh, using the little wheel here on the end. I'm just going to run this back and forth a little bit. A screwdriver for that. It's going to work? Yep. Just feeling for any resistance, anything that just doesn't feel good. And if it all feels good, we'll go ahead and button it all up. All that's left now is to put our Phillips screws back in and then we'll be ready to reinstall it in the car. Cinch it all down, take a look all the way around, make sure that it's seated properly, it looks good. And then finally we'll go ahead and rotate this back since we had to move it to get this screw in. 
I just want it to be in the same spot it was when we took it off. We are all back together. That was, that was quite a thing, huh? So I'm going to add a little grease to this wheel here just because I've got it out. But we're going to go ahead and reinstall it and I'll go ahead and test it because I'm, I just want to make sure it's working before I put everything all back together. We can do our little trick with the tape on the two switches and just make sure that both latch motors go all the way to their ends, stop and go all the way to the other side and we don't have any crazy sounds or clicky noises or we break a tooth again. got Heidi with us now and we're gonna go ahead and, and test the top so this is the moment of truth I sure hope we got everything back together properly so what we're gonna do is the top is already all the way down we've set our rollers to the completely open position so this is where they would be if everything was operating properly they should be pointing to the center and that's the up and open position what we're going to do is raise the top up and get it up to a place where we can go ahead and put our tape over those two switches again and then we're going to test these latch motors and make sure they're working before we have it closed for reals. We've got tape over our switches so Heidi's going to go ahead and test this and we're going to watch the motors up here for the latch and make sure that they operate properly. They should go up, they should go down, everything should be great. So fingers crossed. There we go. Great. Nice. Now open. Other way. Yep. Whoa. Oh, that's good. Okay, and now hmm. down again. Closed. All right. Woohoo! All right. That that's sounds great. Sign, huh? That's a great sign. Okay, that means we got our cams in the right place. It means that our little uh, micro switches are working properly and that everything is great. So now what I'm gonna do is uh, go ahead and remove the tape and we'll actually get the top to go down and watch it actually latch on the top of the windshield here. So, okay. Heidi, go ahead and let it rip. Woohoo! yay! Okay, great. Now, the, the, uh, can you go ahead and raise it back up to about vertical, about where it was? There we go, and stop. Okay, and now back down. Perfect. All right, well that was a great success, woohoo. So we have one last thing we need to check. We need to actually start the car and make sure that the light on the dash goes out. Okay, here we go. Moment of truth. We're going to go ahead and start the car and make sure we can see right where that, right where the uh, minute hand is. It's pointing right at the graphic for the top. So what we're looking for is for that to go out. Ah, look at that. Yay! Let's go ahead and roll the top up a little bit. Okay, there the light turns on, good. All right, we'll go ahead and close the top now. And there it goes and the light goes out. Success, yay! Well, that was a rip-roaring success. So all that's left now is to go ahead and put our black cover on up here. So that's just snap it in place and then the two Phillips screws on either side and we are finished. super excited that worked great that was a it was a bit of a project but it was totally worth it the top's going up down perfectly and our light is going off on the dash so I'm very excited so I did a bunch of research on this thing and Porsche wants about close to $1,200 for one of these latch motors they're expensive 
I was able to find, I think an aftermarket one for somewhere around 800, and then a used one on eBay for 300. And was still, that was a bit much, and that's an unknown part. So I continued to search and search, and then that's how I came across this gear set, which was still fairly expensive. It was 120 bucks. I thought that was still pretty expensive for two little brass gears. It's certainly quite a bit cheaper than 11 or 1200 dollars. And it was a bit of a fuss to get it in, and it was a little weird, but we got it in, and it's working great. So I'm super, super excited about the results, and very happy to have that light off on the dash. It is important. It's telling you that one of the latches isn't really secure. So that's a pretty important light. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it, give it a thumbs up. If you got any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below, and I'll get right to them. You can always follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and if you really like this, go ahead and, and uh, share it with your friends. That would be super duper awesome. Thank you so, so much for watching, and until next time, safe travels. Bye.